Power Six conferences, the Big 12 was the second only to the American Athletic Conferences, having the worst opening weekend. Brian Astrich is our TCU insider, but it's all knowing when it comes to the Big 12 as well. And first, Brian, the good news. What stood out to you among the top teams in the conference? You know, Ray, for me, I think there were two things that really stood out. One is the play of TCU against LSU. Uh, I think the fact that they were able to play with this SEC powerhouse uh, for the entire game, essentially, it ends up being a 10-point game. But let's face it, uh, it was a three-point game late in that one in TCU's defense really kind of held LSU in check. I think that's a positive sign for the Big 12, hanging with a well an upper echelon team in the SEC and LSU preseason number 12, albeit a low ranking for them in the last decade to start the year. I think the other positive sign was Oklahoma. Pitches a shutout against Louisiana Monroe. Hey, Louisiana Monroe, I know what you're thinking, but Todd Berry's a good football coach. Their athletic director came out this week and said, hey, they can be the Gonzaga of college football. Oklahoma takes care of business, does it with a young quarterback, and I'm going to sneak in one more. I thought David Ash in the second half for Texas. You could tell he got the speed of the game down and how they want to run this offense for the Longhorns this year. Those four touchdown passes, I think, will end up being huge for his conference. Brian, TCU played both Casey Paw Hall and Trayvon Boykins at quarterback. Both made their different marks on the field, but Monday, Paw Hall was named the starter. So what's the plan then for Boykins? You know, I think Trayvon Boykins is going to be on the field a lot, Ray. I, I, I think there's an entire package. Uh, for Trevon Boykin. I think you, they're going to keep teams honest with him at wide receiver, with him at running back. I think you'll still see him split or, or split out, obviously, but under center as well. I think this is a guy that has to be on the field. Gary Patterson, when he said yesterday that Casey Paha is my starting quarterback, he also said, but we've got to get the ball in Trevon Boykin's hands. You know, this team coming out of the LSU game, when you talk to them as a man, they felt like they knew the plan, that, that uh, both quarterbacks were going to play, that you were going to see Trevon Boykin in that second half. And so it was no surprise to them. I think it was a surprise to all of us, the early hook for Casey Ball. Brian, they say a team, or in this case a conference, is only as strong as its weakest link. So how badly do those losses by Iowa State and Kansas State to FCS teams hurt the perception of the Big 12 across the country? You know, I think if that was two bad FCS teams, I think it would be one thing. But you're talking about Northern Iowa, traditionally a power uh, in that division, and North Dakota State. Hey, back-to-back -back national champions. The Bison can play some football, and they proved it against Kansas State. I think both those teams will recover. Uh, but, you know, it, hey, this happens. Ask Michigan about Appalachian State. Ask Virginia Tech about James Madison. These games can occur. Uh, I'm not going to take those two games and tell you that the Big 12 is out of the race by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, I want to look at those top four teams. I want to look at Oklahoma and Oklahoma State and TCU and Texas. And heck, let's throw in Baylor throwing 69 points up in their opener against an FCS team. Or, yeah, an FCS team. I, I want to see how they do. Let's see how this uh, thing plays out. But I I'm not writing off the Big 12 just yet. And don't forget, William and Mary, too, took West Virginia right there to the wire. That's, of course, uh, in that conference as well. All right, thanks as always. Brian Estridge, our TCU Insider. We appreciate it.